all right good morning everyone uh, hope you are safe and sound so we start with this lesson on digital marketing this will be really important for you to carry on with your project so this is the next part that we're discussing uh, when you talk about digital marketing uh, so the whole idea is to use your marketing skills in the digital platform right so we are supposed to look at from an angle like how we can uh, use these principles of marketing uh, in a digital ecosystem, right? So again, uh, like any other thing, uh, when you're starting with, you have to have a strategy, right? You have a strategy, uh, otherwise it will not be long term, right? So to start with the digital marketing, uh, when you look at this sample strategy, you can start with uh, uh, researching, right? You can start with uh, uh, researching, uh, uh, so that's basically now we know like we had a discussion about this what is this research in a nutshell like how do you do this research in uh, social media analytics uh, and also we discussed about this academic research also so you should not uh, kind of mix them up all right then once you do the research you will find out uh, the basic uh, problems the gaps like uh, say as an example if you want to market uh, uh, business uh, say this is a uh, uh, now today's today's uh, context right today's context uh, it's quite interesting to uh, see that uh, everybody is wanting to have uh, this delivery food delivery type of uh, or you know uh, uh, yeah delivery type of business uh, and uh, once you want to do that you have to find out a gap so the gap is all in there like everybody is having this problem of getting uh, like uh, your goods to your house safe in a uh, safer way uh, so that's sort of the gap so currently the current situation you don't really have to worry about it but uh, if you don't have such a clear cut uh, mm, uh, problem defined right so you might have to do a bit of research right and then you can do business analysis so that is where you do all this uh, you know analytics related things right then you build your product right or service right and uh, there you have to do your designing and other things right then you have to implement and of course uh, very important to measure things so that is again where you use your analytics right and then uh, manage your results then again you can go through the loop so this is sort of a good strategy right so anybody can use this sort of uh, marketing strategy to come up with better products and services and this is uh, a good framework so you, you have to have strategies and also we have to have frameworks um, so once you have a framework you know exactly what are your steps so strategies is a long-term thing a high level thing a framework give you a sort of a step by step uh, mechanism on how to carry on this so here it says uh, know your clients first right uh, know your client first so that is the first requirement right knowing your client understanding your client and then you have to solve their problem right so they have their own unique problems so then you try to solve their problems and also be clear on your value so uh, there can be a lot of people who wants to solve this problem now in today's context everybody wants to get medicine so that you can find a service where they deliver uh, medicinal things right so uh, but the value can be for the moment for people maybe time like a lot of people are having issues of getting their medicine on time so if you can come up with uh, value for your service now you know what happened to a cup looker right so they probably did the right thing but they have not provided the right value for the people so then it uh, it backfired to them right so you have to proper uh, put put a value uh, so later on we discuss about these value propositions as well so if you don't know how to create a value so you can use this kind of a model to come up with the proper value because value is something that everybody is looking at even the same problem is there now with dialogue right so uh, so they do a great service right but um, sometimes people are really looking for value even at the times of crisis right I can remember the time of tsunami this is going back to 2004 uh, all these telco providers, uh, I mean, like, uh, they, were, they were told because like everybody wants to take a call to their loved ones. No telco didn't work, right? 
uh, even the landlines, I can't remember, even the mobile phones didn't work. So, so that that's sort of uh, losing your value at the time of crisis. So I, I know like it's hard to do it, but still uh, you have to uh, plant pitch on the value. So that's a, uh, that's a big uh, impact of using digital media, right? Digital or social media, web for this purpose. And you know, like, uh, like all the things uh, that happened the last two, three weeks or the last month or so, uh, it's mainly on a digital platform, right? Social platform. So you, if you just think about Facebook was not there, think about WhatsApp was not there, think about uh, the other the, the media like you know the Google and the YouTube. There's nothing, you know. So just just think of a world uh, without those. So it, it can be very difficult. Right? So there's plenty of opportunities there, even the time of crisis. So there's a there's a huge value addition that you can do from this medium. And you know, like how dependent you were on this medium, right? So people uh, do watch news on media. So all these things are there, right? So I know the other mediums also are strong, like television, even times radio. But now, see, the newspaper was completely taken out. So now, uh, for the digital things, there's a better say. Uh, so and you know, like uh, talking about working from home and uh, you know all online working. There's a huge, uh, you know, huge potential for that, and everybody used it, and you are also using this model. Right? You're watching it through online, the YouTube, and other things. All right. Uh, so there's basically uh, we're looking at. Then you have to set the goals and results. Set the goals for results. So if you want to get the uh, results, you have to set goals, and then understand the buyer's journey. So then you have to understand what buyer would do, right? And uh, what buyer is planning to do. So you have to understand this. And then pick your channels, content, and then nurture your leads. So then you have to define your leads. So uh, you have to find ways of getting them into you, right? And convert uh, prospects to customers, right? So then obviously we discuss a nice case study later on. So um, you, you have prospects, right? So you have a lot of prospects. So there are plenty of prospects out there, right? But all these prospects would not convert to customers. You say conversion, right? So you don't get converted customers. Uh, that that's how it goes, right? That's how it goes. Uh, it takes time, so but you have to use the right leads, so then you'll be able to uh, work it out, right? So this sort of framework can be used for your projects, for your uh, products or services that you're planning to market, right? So this might not be very clear, but you get the slides and you can have a look at it. So all these things are taken from the internet. This and also this particular infograph or infographic. So this is also kind of a planning framework. So I'll not go detail into it, uh, but uh, what you find here is there are so many different techniques that they're using. As an example here at this particular segment, you can find if you search engine optimization, pay per click, PPC, affiliate marketing, online advertising, online PR. So all these things can be used, right? So later on we'll discuss all these particular techniques, SEO, search engine optimizations, we talk about this on-page SEO, right? On-page SEO and uh, out-of-page SEO, like backlinking. So all these things we'll discuss, right? Uh, yeah. So similarly, uh, then you have ways of converting, like you have especially these things like content marketing, and market automation. So these are very interesting things, and these things like market automation is uh, having a quite a knack in the industry right now. You can use even things like AI into this, right? So it's quite quite. Uh, popular right and also social commerce right so you have a lot of b2b and b2c type of businesses uh, in this uh, social media and web media right then you have to engage things so we'll discuss this later on but we'll probably come back to this a uh, bit later right and this is uh, quite an interesting uh, model right so uh, there are a lot of questions you ask here when you want to uh, come up with your uh, digital marketing plan right so you have to ask these questions to who you are going to do this for what purpose and why you are doing this so all these questions to be asked when before you set up uh, your uh, long-term strategy right and uh, also apart from these three questions the three w questions there are other questions uh, which you have to ask when you are going to do it and how you are going to do it and where you are going to do it think of you are starting your own online business right now in sri lanka uh, who are your customers, right? 
who are your customers? Are these customers in who are in Western province who are locked down? Right? Is uh, is this the customer base you are looking for? And what what is your purpose? Right? Are you going to deliver things on time? Are you going to give more safer, uh, I don't know, safer delivery or something like that? And also, why you are doing that? What is the reason for you? Now, so the reason is to cover up this particular gap in this uh, uh, the, the week's time period or uh, it, it can be uh, long term it can be long term right so you have to come up with this model and also how you are going to do that when and where so all these things matters so and all these places you have to measure and optimize uh, whatever you are doing so this is kind of a model that you can use right so uh, and come back to this uh, just give it a second all right uh, so the next uh, we we'll look at this uh, case study so this is a very famous case study uh, which is related to digital marketing. Uh, so basically, uh, this case study uh, uh, is about this uh, Ford Fiesta movement, right? So uh, this particular car called uh, Fiesta from Ford, uh, when it was introduced, they were not in that market segment. So they wanted to uh, use uh, this digital media much as possible and try to market this right so they use a lot of interesting techniques in digital marketing they had a strategy they had a framework they had all these things they, they knew all this uh, planning right so they use this techniques so we'll look at what they have done so basically uh, i'll take to this uh, take you to this first uh, article uh, this article talks about uh, right uh, digital marketing case study from Ford. Uh, so, the background is one of the most common digital marketing case studies. American automobile manufacturer want to re-enter the mm, compact car market. So they were not in that compact car. This is like the small cars. So they wanted to come to this compact car market. Uh, the US after 13 years. So before launching their new Ford Fiesta model, right, the company want to show potential customers what the car would do. So and how people just like them. So, so basically they targeted, target audience was the millennials, right? So known to be difficult target audience uh, to convince. But the millennials was uh, in uh, online media. So they started a campaign called Fiesta Movement, this Fiesta Movement. Uh, and uh, they did a lot of things and they were really interesting. So uh, this is how they've done it. Uh, Ford uh, marketing team did a uh, meticulous job. Uh, so they created over... So with the help of people, right, 4,100 video applications were received, right, over 50 states in US and uh, then 100, so it's like a campaign, a kind of a competition. Uh, those selected had an average 1,000 followers on Facebook and also they used a lot of all these social media like hotspots like people who are like you know, the important people, they uh, get them and at once they have given some cars for free as well for them to use and get their feedback and all that. And uh, so basically, they wanted everyone to do like community uh, updates. So in Facebook and uh, I think in Instagram, yes, Instagram, and some other media. Right? So and some of these things went viral, right? So and the result, the campaign sparked huge engagement on social media, and the user generated content that uh, then formed basically the company's TV spots and print ads. So whatever the user generated content was used, right, a lot in uh, uh, their uh, company TV, right. And the advertisements. So, see the leads which we talked about earlier. So, 50,000 sales leads achieved. Pre launch brand awareness uh, 38%. And content ge uh, generated 4,000 videos, 5,000 photos, 7,000 tweets, 600 plus blog mentions, 1.8 million followers. Right? Uh, so, that is a lot. This is 2011. And there was another uh, secondary uh, campaign in 2014. I think it uh, worked much better. Right, so the key takeaways is understand your target audience well and focus on identifying the right personas. And it's important to understand how to speak to your target audience in a way that will reach them and convince them using media that they follow. 
right so it's very important so you get the target to the millennials right so they should be in youtube in uh, facebook you know so you can find uh, where 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 are this target audience if you go back to the slide so slide also have this uh, base concept so where are they right so where are they so how you are going to approach them and when you're going to approach them so those are the important questions user generated content speaks volumes uh, uh, and is better received than promotional content so see like um, this is something uh, it's in the trust you know the way that people believe things especially the millennials so you can look at 100 ads you can see 100 ads but uh, if you have one post from somebody who is really uh, into you right uh, super uh, the super people who are there like you know that you believe in so if they come with this just comment one comment so i like this particular brand or i like this particular car so that means a lot more than that advertisement so advertisement can uh, generate this uh, uh, likeness but it's it happens rarely so it's more of awareness but you have to have another following funnel you know market a marketing funnel to capture and convert that lead to a real customer right that's called a convert conversion and she has experiences in faster conversion as they build trust you know so they told, told you about this trust trust is everything finally it pays try to turn your target audience into uh, your brand ambassadors so what if normal like you know you find brand ambassadors like Virat Kohli's and such uh, Sachin uh Kumar Sangakkar uh, all these people right you're paying millions billions sometimes right so, but if what if you have a thousand or ten thousand or one million ambassadors in Facebook promoting your brand? That's really great, no? So, this is the essence of digital marketing, right? So, there are so many interesting uh, digital marketing case studies. So, check this site, guys. Um, so, there are plenty of things here. Uh, I will put the uh, link also in my show notes or the, the description, right? So, coming back, uh, so there are a nice set of YouTube videos which you'll have a look at. So let me copy this one. So, um, yeah, so I'll take the first video, then we'll have a look at it. Uh, so I had to give the full credit for this uh, YouTube owners, video owners. Yeah, I'll put the links again. So this is the Ford Fiesta Movement. Hello and welcome to our Ford Fiesta Movement case study. This case study is presented by Anna Julia, Toby, Greg, Monica launched a new marketing campaign called the Ford Fiesta Movement. This campaign combines social media and viral marketing techniques to reintroduce the sixth generation Ford Fiesta to the American auto industry. During the 2009 recession, consumers were spending less and had a growing interest in smaller, more so the background is in 2009-10, uh, the, the America, they had the recession and they had less amount to pay and they didn't want any luxury cars, so they want to have a compact car. So that was the right time. See, the when was very important, which we discussed earlier. Fuel efficient cars, but still drove big gas gasoline SUVs. Ford's objective of attracting American consumers to purchase their new Ford Fiesta supported their new global plan. This one Ford strategy aimed to decrease production costs and increase profits. To compete within the highly competitive auto industry, Ford had to overcome a wide variety of challenges. In order to increase profits, Ford had to attract a younger generation of consumers to purchase their smaller cars. Unlike other marketing strategies from automakers, Ford's goal was to target a demographic that, consume, that consumes new media. So their demographics was uh, this special millennials, right? That was the target market of demographic. So they basically uh, pushed all their marketing campaign towards these people. Following the economic collapse, Ford faced low marketing budgets while also needing to promote new products. The company decided to implement an innovative marketing strategy focused on the importance of sharing content amongst friends through social media. A technique that had never been implemented by an automa automaker. So this was a landmark uh, case study in a way because uh, this was not used earlier. But now you can see uh, even companies like Tesla, they are doing it uh, really often or like very often. Uh, 
they use a lot of digital platforms to market their products and they are very successful in it so we can have a look at it probably later on or you can just go to youtube and search like uh, how they're doing uh, things in uh, at tesla right? especially using a digital platform right i think they have a very strong uh opposing uh, digital media right and uh, because of that reason even though there are so many issues for tesla i think that company is heading towards one, to be one of the greatest companies ever right so so try to understand the power you know of uh, social media or this usage of digital media right so so don't get confused all these words you know refers to the same thing right so especially like digital when it's a digital is social plus web Ford's solution to a low marketing budget and a need to attract younger consumers was implementing a viral social media campaign. This demographic, 14 to 29 year olds, spent the majority of their time on social media channels, sharing content and experiences with friends. To ensure the campaign was a success, Ford searched for agents that had a large following through social media channels. The agents were given a Ford Fiesta for six months and shared their experiences with their followers through photos, videos, tweets whether it was a good or bad for Ford's reputation. This strategy was risky due to the So now, see, there's always a risk in this type of strategy. So you have to get the marketing type of risk as well. So if, if the product is having issues, so this can uh, basically become a flop, you know. Uh, so uh, when that happens, the flop goes faster, it, you know, it burns faster than even a good story. So. First, you have to understand your product and service has the right quality levels. If you don't have it, if you don't have that particular value for the customer, I think the usage of this would be quite dangerous. So you have to, I think you have to go very slow. You should not accelerate anything uh, like using this digital marketing, right? So that's also is very important. I think that's in a way what happens to a uh, You know, I don't know whether it's scam or not, but uh, it's hard to give any uh, opinions on that. But uh, seems to be there's something wrong. So see like they can market they have a good social presence but we have to be very careful like if your product and service is not at the right quality right and the right value system not pro providing a proper value proposition so all these things are not in the right place it's highly uh, unsuitable to use this sort of strategy for for the uh, for the improvement of your product or service the fact that ford had no say in what agents publicized although the campaign presented a dangerous pr risk the campaign was a highly innovative and influential marketing strategy that revolutionized how automakers and global brands target the millennial generation. Reviewing the outcome, we consider Ford's marketing strategy campaign as extremely successful. During the campaign, the agents were very active and posted over 10,000 videos, 20,000 pictures and gained 2,100 Facebook fans. Ford reported that approximately 50,000 prospective customers had expressed interest in buying a Fiesta during the campaign. 97% of these leads did not own a Ford car. Furthermore, brand awareness rose to 38% among the target group. After the launch of the Fiesta, Ford sold 23,000 cars during the second half of 2010. The following year, sales increased to over 68,000 and in 2012 Ford sold more than 56,000 units. Because of the success of this innovative marketing strategy, Ford was awarded with the Golden Effie Award by the American Marketing Association. Through an innovative approach, Ford successfully reached a target audience that was notoriously difficult to attract. By leveraging social media channels, Ford was able to increase brand awareness, brand engagement, as well as increase sales during a viral period in their Ford One strategy. Due to the recent growth and popularity of social media, Ford capitalized on a new channel that leveraged interaction. Ford was at the forefront of establishing a, tra a trend among, among global companies beginning to advertise through social media channels. Although campaigns are highly interactive and easily shared among friends, there are limitations to advertising on social media. Currently, a social media campaign only targets a younger demographic and leverages a product that is of interest to a younger generation. However, as social media evolves and the population ages, these platforms will become a powerful marketing medium used to reach a vast group of consumers. All right. Okay, that's the first video. So we'll go for another one quickly. 
so How do you change one opinion, let alone millions, okay, so with a movement? Quick video. So we look at it. The Fiesta was a new subcompact car from Ford. We thought it was amazing, but our credibility in the small car market was pretty close to zero. So instead of sharing our opinion, we gave 100 cars to 100 web active agents and asked them... So they basically selected, handpicked these agents uh, who are very popular in web media social media and they provided this cars for some time it's like for EVB. share their experiences we didn't tell them what to say we just wanted them to have fun and be honest which is exactly what they did creating hundreds of millions of people talking sharing videoing test driving and buying and before any dust could settle we did a little remix focusing not just on scale but on connectivity we selected 20 teams of two from 16 different cities and they each had four missions the big idea Whatever you do, get your community involved. The teams with the most fan in So they clearly push that idea uh, that they want to involve the community. So here the, the rule or the logic is if you have the community, you can get this uh, leads pretty quickly. And you can get the conversions also because uh, people trust each other. So when you have a community in social media, you have this uh, clusters which you trust. So that's the whole theory here. Interactions, the biggest followings, would get their own 2011 Ford Fiesta. Not only did this build on the awareness we had earned from our first round of agents, but it got people up, out of their houses, and actively participating on their own turf. In just 14 weeks, we earned over 587 million engagements, all through conversations, content, and community events. Finally, to make the campaign a perfect three-part harmony, we finished the Fiesta Movement project by picking our most favorite agents to produce and star in feature-based videos. Like how the vehicle compared to a Lamborghini, or the best way to outrun zombies, bringing us a million more views on YouTube. And when you add all the numbers up from every phase of the Fiesta movement, it's pretty crazy what we accomplished. It was the most comprehensive, long-lasting, and ultimately effective campaign ever created by the people and for the people. We trusted that our agents would like the car and have fun with it. And guess what? They did. So, um, I believe they got the idea. So there's one last video, uh, which how they explain they used Instagram to do this. So this can be very good uh, lessons for you all, like uh, to understand uh, how these different platforms can be used. Fiestagram, the first branded photography competition using Instagram and Facebook, inspired by the Ford Fiesta. Not everyone knows that the car is packed with state-of-the-art technology. So our task? Increase awareness of these innovative features. A weekly photo challenge was set featuring key Fiesta technologies. All our entrants had to do was take a picture, add a filter, tag it hashtag Fiestagram, and then upload it to Instagram. The global Fiesta Facebook fan page was the hub for our campaign. Here we shared information on the prizes, the gallery of submissions, and the judges. By building the application using HTML5, the content hub was also optimized for mobile, so people could keep up to date with the competition on the go. And because participants shared their entries to friends on Facebook and Twitter, the reach was vast, resulting in regular appearances on the popular page of Instagram. We took the campaign into the real world too, exhibiting the images in physical galleries and on digital billboards, presenting them in real time as the submissions poured in from across Europe. In fact, over 16,000 photos were submitted. The Facebook hub had an average dwell time of 3.4 minutes. So like, try to think that this, uh, to be achieved this one in a normal media platform, normal addressing platform, it might take ages, right? So this is so fast, so quick, and so trustworthy, so reliable. So that's how this uh, added value, right? And added over 120,000 new fans. Blogs and media coverage helped spread the Fiesta technology message to millions. With one of our judges even appearing on Spanish national news. The results prove our Fiestagram campaign was as innovative as Fiesta technology itself. 
and a thriving Fiestagram community continues there today. Alright, so then you got the idea, so come back again to the slides. So I'll share the slides so you guys can uh, see the videos again if you want to. Right, and also uh, there are other uh, companies, so please uh, watch this video, right, so that you can learn a bit more about uh, what other campaigns they use. I'll not run this video. Right, then you need to have a kind of a marketing plan, right, so this is also very important. So when you have a marketing plan, right, uh, it's uh, quite important to understand uh, there are a few things that you need to consider. First, the revenue, what would be your revenue, right, and what would be your cost. So how do you, as an example, I took with me. So revenue would be uh, selling the particular service. So it can be the vehicle, or it can be uh, delivery of food items, right? Or it can be any other services they give. So through the services, you get your revenue, right? And the cost would be the amount that you have to pay on for you have to, whatever, whatever the things that you pay for your system, software, for the marketing and all these things. And product service. So what sort of service that you're providing. So you have to be very clear with the value additions uh, so later on we'll discuss about it and also your customer you have to understand the demographics of your customer right so uh, depending on your demographics everything changes so similarly if you look car gales right so it do the same thing and see it can be very different to pick me right so uh, depending on uh, that uh, the plan you'll understand how do you use to how do you have to use your digital platform can be different Right, so this is where yeah, you get into a, a very interesting concept called value proposition, right? So a lot of people um, are not really worried about this uh, whole idea of, about uh, value proposition, right? Uh, because uh, one thing is, uh, it's not a common uh, common uh, sense, you know, uh, the idea of value is not common sense for most of us, right? Uh, but uh, the reality is that without, uh, without, uh, uh, say without uh, value people will not buy into a lot of things right say uh, we can talk about this basic idea of iPhone and it was in, in, in 2007 there were other be better products uh, uh, than iPhone but it bought a value like you know it means uh, it meant a lot of things for people so because of that because of that value uh, they spend more money and they bought uh, the iPhone so similarly now uh, the phones like the samsung galaxy note with the pen so that also matters because of the value because it gives some value than the other phone so you have to come up with this proposition of a value right so then it's easier for you to sell things so selling is the last thing that you do so there uh, this one brings a lot of uh, ease in the order but there's uh, it gives a kind of a platform for you to sell things much faster easily right so basically these are the things to consider when you're coming up with the value proposition so probably you have learned this in your marketing lessons what are you selling right so now we have to just think from this from a uh, digital perspective right so but you know before that you have to ask these basic questions and right? right so and then the benefit and also target customer and what makes you unique so this probably can be the the important thing so there are a lot of people who are fighting uh, to come up with their own value propositions but uh, this is how you can be unique from them where you have uh, a kind of some uh, uniqueness right into your value so if, if the value is unique so you are properly you know situated in the space uh, to sell your product or services all right so this is uh, this jeffrey moore's value proposition template which is quite uh, interesting right uh, so this most template is available in the internet so uh, he breaks down uh, in, uh, the value proposition to several parts so uh, so let's check right so first one is the four right uh, for who uh, for like which person or the customer uh, you're doing it uh, to who right and uh, the product and service and which provides and unlike so that's basically uh, your competitors and uh, clearly define your product and solution. So if you try to answer these questions, you get your value proposition, right? So we'll look at a small video clip uh, by Moore uh, explaining uh, his uh, way of thinking about this value proposition, right? So if you look at this video, it is available in YouTube.
Okay. Now that we have our competitive analysis laid out, we need to complete a key part of our pitch deck and, coincidentally, part of your final project. This is the value proposition. Our value proposition is our promise of value to our customers or investors. Now, it explains what problem our product solves and what benefits we're giving our customers. We need to frame our value proposition so everything we learn in this lesson is clear, organized, and powerful. The leading template for value propositions in use today was written by none other than Jeffrey Moore in his book, Crossing the Chasm. So let's hear from the expert himself. When it comes to articulating a value proposition, we have a, a template that we use in, in our practice, which has got six lines. And it's proved over the years to be pretty useful. Um, so the, the first line is for, and that's just like, who are you talking to? And so basically your target, right? And, and we'll talk about market segmentation, but we're going to talk to what we call the poster child in your segment, the per, your perfect target customer. And the next line is called who, and that, that uh, specifies the state that your target customer would be in in, in, in wanting your, your offer. So, that, so you have for these people who are in this state of mind, then the third uh, uh, line is called our product or our service is. And that's where you categorize your offer generically. You, it's a little bit like what aisle in the supermarket would I go to to find your product? It's sort of that sort of thing is in line three. So you're not trying to differentiate in line three. You're just trying to say what, what you are. And then that, and the fourth line, is your primary benefit. The thing that basically, it speaks a lot to the state in, that the customer's in. Typically, if the state is a problem state, this is the answer to that problem kind of thing. And then the last two lines help position you against your closest competitor. So, so the value provision, you have to understand you have to be unique. So you have to always look at from your competitor's perspective. So unlike, and this is where you put your closest competitor, and what's important here is that you not pick a competitor that's, that's uh, ineffective or, or, uh, or not valuable to the customer. You want to pick a legitimate alternative that this customer should probably be thinking about but then what you say is, unlike this competitor, our offer, and that's the sixth line, and you state your primary differentiation there. And it's not that our offer is better. Well, uh, it's typically what you normally do with differentiation is you say, they are good for this, and we are good for that. All right. So I hope you got the basic idea of uh, the value proposition. So we'll move on. Uh, next part is uh, about business models. Right. So. Once you set up all these high-level things, uh, the next one is to look at your model of the business, right? So now you see you have, see the value proposition in Coke. So, so you all understand uh, what the value is brings out, the taste and other things surrounding, right? So, and then you have to look at other things like key partners, right? So, so for Coke, there are manual distribution centers and this bottler and also key activities, bottling, distribution. So these are things that they do marketing. So they do a lot of marketing, right? And the secret recipe, that's a secret recipe. So these are the resources and syrup factory, bottles and crates, bottling plants, all these things are the key activities and key resources. So then you see the uh, value proposition after you go into this basic model. And then you have to have the customer relationships. So uh, there you find uh, things like resident account developer, advertisement uh, to cost consumers, right? And the channels. So, what are the channels that they're using? So, the large-scale distribution, manual distribution centers, and also customer segmentation and cost structure, uh, and also revenue for the revenue, bulk sales, and retail prices. So, similarly, if you go to another example, uh, which is Facebook, they also have the similar things in place. So, key partners, content partners like TV shows, movies, plus other things. Activities, uh, platform development, data center management. So they have a lot of large data centers for Facebook. Resources, Facebook platform, technology. And this is the value platform, or value, sorry, value prop proposition, right? Connect with your friends. So that's the value that it brings, right? And uh, so this is what happening right now also. It's happening, right? So people are giving messages, sh sharing uh, the issues that everybody is facing in this crisis time, Corona crisis time. So they're sharing and also reach, you know, you can reach people, reach your friends. So everybody's sharing their old photos to keep the stress levels goes, going out, right? So to, to make things smoother, right? So they do that, right? So, um, okay. All 
All right, so, uh, so as we explained, uh, so this is the business model. Moving on, and also you can do a small exercise. So go to this uh, URL, uh, and you will find that uh, there's a nice uh, comparison between the Facebook and Google's business model. So that can be something very interesting for you guys to study. So please do it, and we'll have a discussion on that later. And also, uh, when you do this, it's very important to understand the business cycle, life cycle. So a normally business life cycle would look like this. So you just have this launching phase, like the startup phase, and then the growth phase, and then the uh, maturity. So maturity is where you basically, if you look at the uh, analysis part of this, this is where you have to get the biggest profit, right? Biggest profit. So uh, at the launch, you can't get a good profit, right? Uh, so it, it takes some time right and also so as you can see the cash is something you know it's a flatten and you can get more of that when it comes to the maturity stage and of course everything declines when it's in the decline stage so this is where i have to revamp your model right or uh, business model strategies and things like that so one good example that i can always remember this one very simple one uh, we had a product called rinso right so it has a same life cycle and at one point, uh, when they realized that the, they had a declining state of the product, so they uh, rebranded it as a ring and uh, release it. So, don't know the right move, but yeah. So these sort of things you can do in the business life right there. So try to understand. So these basics will remain the same. So these basics will never go out, right? So basics will be the same, right? So whatever the marketing basics will apply for digital marketing as well. All right, these questions you can answer now. So the first question, if your company is in the startup stage of the business life cycle, as a marketeer, uh, you'll be most focused on understanding uh, if there's a sustainable interest in your product or service. So you have to say whether yes or no. So uh, in Sunday's discussion, we'll talk about the answers. So today, uh, like, this is a one-way thing. So if I just record the lecture, you won't be learning anything. So try to find the answer for this. If your company is in the growth stage, uh, business life cycle, as a marketeer, uh, say you can put uh, the prefix digital market here uh, uh, you will be the most focused on return on investment and lifetime value of a customer yes or no right and the last one is when then you have the declining stage right uh, I cycle as a market here uh, you will be most focused on the retention of the new growth initiative again yes or no. so please try to answer this all right so that's uh, in this particular session we'll start with uh, uh, the next continuing session uh, uh, in the next lecture. So please watch this and ask your questions in the Slack and we'll have the Sunday session so there also we can discuss more about it. All right.